Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again at Hudson County View, live and uncut, back and better than ever. I'm your host, the personification of Ground Game God Global, John Arhitis. And once again, there was a ton of news here at Hudson County, so let's get to it. So it might be slightly dated at this point, but it still bears mentioning that last Wednesday, eight days ago, the Hoboken City Council passed a $117.6 million budget that may cause a layoff in the mayor's office, and you can imagine what the fallout is there. Also in the Mile Square City, Prominent developer Frank Rea, his federal vote by mail trial has been now moved to Monday with jury selection expected to commence in the morning. Beyond Hoboken, the Bayonne Board of Education, after many months of deliberations at a surprise emergency meeting and in a vote that took less than 10 minutes, appointed a new superintendent taking a school's chief from over in Monmouth County. And also, my colleague Mark Businich was over in Jersey City on Monday, and he was able to uh, endure a brutally long uh, caucus meeting, as they usually are, where they discussed Airbnb regulations, and a lot of those hosts were fit to be tied about what this new legislation might have to say about short-term rentals. So we got that and a whole lot more for you. We're just going to take a quick break. Just stick with us for a moment. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. All right, folks, we're back. Hudson County View live and uncut. So let's talk a little turkey in Hoboken. So like I mentioned in the beginning, eight days ago, the Hoboken Council approved a budget that's $117.6 million. That comes with a 1.7% tax increase down from about the 3% introduced by the administration around two months ago. So while budgets are usually, uh, of course, a lot of numbers crunching, it's typically kind of boring stuff. Uh, that's not the case this time around, though. There has been a ton of infighting over this budget. The mayor is uh, very displeased with the element of the budget that cut $85,000 from his office. He's claiming that this is fiscally irresponsible and politically vindictive because it will lead to the layoff of his deputy chief of staff, that's Jason Freeman. Now, the council has come back and they've said that that's not the case at all. As a matter of fact, they can't even do terminations in the manner that the mayor is saying. All they can do is a just budget line items, whatever the case may be, you know, that line has been cut and there's been, uh, you know, cuts made that make totals of about $642,000. So it's an interesting play, one that I haven't seen before and one that is certainly going to have implications heading into those November 5th Ward Council races. Mayor Vavi Bala is, of course, running candidates in Wards 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 at this time. It remains to be seen if he will let 3rd Ward Councilman Mike Russo run unopposed. But for the time being, that's how it is. That's how it's going. Why don't we take you to the meeting and you guys can have a look at some of what we saw eight days ago. Amendment that was approved for um, basically $836,000 of cuts. Um, since that time, we had to make, there were a few changes that we had to make. Um, some corrected, some um, additional changes that the administration had put in because the budget was still open. Um, but then there were also some that were discretionary changes that based on feedback that we heard from many of you, based on feedback we heard from other council members, based on kind of further review of some of the numbers, we put some additional money back. And I think, and I don't have the exact number in front of us, but I think instead of being 836,000, and we were at around 640,000 of cuts. So instead of a tax rate of 1.3%, it's going to be a tax rate increase of approximately 1.7%. 
In order not to have a public hearing, I need to delay this further. The discussion that we had initially, one of the concerns that was cited was about underfunding and potential layoffs, and I just wanted to confirm, based on some of the conversations that we've had, right, Mark, for but before you get to that, um, we are not cutting any money from any classified salary and wage line. So the um, uh, Director Walter from uh, Division of Local Government Ser Services uh, down the state um, had expressed concern uh, that the council amendment uh, was potentially uh, underfunding the budget. Um, and I will have to do a reassessment of the reduction in salary and wages uh, to determine if the layoff plan is in fact necessary. So that, I'm sorry, so what Mark is saying is there is a possibility of that? Um, there are reductions in uh, offices and line items uh, where there are structurally where there are current or existing employees, uh, where if, um, if those offices were to be funded at the same rate for the rest of the year, it would lead to a uh, a underfunding of the budget. Very clear. The salary and wage lines of classified workers have not been changed. If it is the administration's choice to take that approach, that is their choice, but it's not the budget popping up. So. Thank you. Mr. Brady, hold the No, I can Waterfront Community on the Hudson River offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com. Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. And we're back, Hudson County View, live and uncut. John R. Highness, my esteemed colleague, Mark Businich. So, Mark, you actually had a little bit of a reprieve from uh, some governmental meetings last week, but uh, you saw what happened at the Hoboken Council. So what do you think about this feud between the council majority, Mayor Bala, coming to a head yet again here? Oh, John, it was compelling. It's a compelling story and you had compelling footage of the actual moment when uh, Council President Jen Giatino shut down any debate about the amendments to the budget that reduces the amount of money that... Um, the overall budget that Mayor Bala called for. And uh, it was interesting to read then, obviously, Councilman at large, James Doyle, and Councilwoman at large, uh, Emily Jabour, their reaction to uh, the actions taken by uh, Ms. Jen Giatino. Um, according to, uh, obviously, as you explained in the opening, uh, Mayor Bala said that, well, with the, but the council cutting, or cutting off these funds, then it's gonna, it'll affect the overall budget and may lead to layoffs directly in his own office, specifically Deputy Chief of Staff Jason Freeman. But according to the council, they're saying that, well, they just, they're not responsible for who, the, who gets hired and fired in the mayor's office and that the mayor has plenty of money to work with. So, um, uh, but to say that it's maybe not a political uh, hit job might be an understatement. <laughs> That's one read on the situation. So uh, let's also talk a little, uh, sticking with Hoboken, let's talk about the Democratic committees. There were two uh, Deb committee, committee meetings on Monday. One was in Jersey City, one was in Hoboken. And actually the chair of Hoboken, unanimous vote, is Rachel Hodis. And uh, lo and behold, she's the wife of Jason Freeman. Do you think that's a coincidence, Mark? 
Uh, no, not at all, John. Not at all. No. I mean, that, that's incredible. I mean, she just was, uh, she's now elected chair of the Hoboken uh, Democratic Committee, correct? That's right. And uh, Phil Cohen, who you know took over for Tiffany Fisher about 14 months ago, of course she's the second ward councilwoman, he's now the first vice chair, and uh, you know, I'm sure that committee is going to do everything they can to fundraise for Mayor Bala's candidates, uh, mm. fair to say? Fair to say, John. I mean, in fact, I was at that, uh, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, right, when he announced uh, his five candidates that will be running against the, the, uh, those who are on the council now, including uh, Peter Cunningham, Michael DeFrisco, um, Jen Giatino, um, Tiffany, Tiffany Fisher, Fisher and, um, and I think that covers it. Uh, so Ruben, Ruben Ramos. And can well. I forget Ruben Ramos, of course. So um, uh, that's where, and we had a chance to interview Phil Cohen, and he said that he's looking forward to running. He feels that he has a really good message for the uh, residents of his ward. Uh, and also we had a chance to interview uh, Magdalia Pagano to find out, well, is she going to be concerned that the Frisco as a running up against the Frisco as a candidate, given his past examples and past history of being able to fundraise a lot of money, she nonetheless said that she's looking forward to, uh, to the election. Yes, yes, I do remember that. I mean, it's going to be fun, uh, no doubt about it. So let's talk a little bit about something we got going on next week. And this is a long ways in the waiting, Mark. But uh, you're obviously aware that Frank Rea, a prominent developer, he's run for mayor, he's run for council unsuccessfully. Yeah. His biggest title was probably the chair of the North Hudson Sewerage Authority. But he was indicted on Halloween for charges surrounding vote by mail in the 2013 municipal races. So that was wow. when uh, there was a mayor that was Dodd Zimmer again. It's Ruben Ramos and Frank Rea was on a ticket headed by Timothy Acapinti. So five people have either pleaded guilty or been indicted and uh, it's all going to come to a head next week. I'm sure we won't have a conclusion next week, but it will start then. I mean, just your whole take on the vote by mail, the FBI, U.S. Attorney's Office, this upcoming trial. Yeah, well, it was, it was supposed to start this week, but it was put off, correct? It's correct, Mark. Yeah, I think we were the first to report. Actually, I know we were the first to report that it was postponed uh, just by six days. So, you know, it was actually supposed to start on Tuesday, but now we're supposedly going to go on Monday. So knock on wood, let's see what happens. And you also were the, f you, uh, you were the first one to break that story that uh, Mr. Ray's former personal tax account, who was the former tax collector for uh, Hoboken, uh, was also recently visited by the FBI, correct? That's correct, yeah. So uh, there's a guy, Louis Picardo, he used to uh, have an uh, accounting firm in Hoboken. Of course, it's no longer there, but it was raided. I'm not exactly sure when, but we'll say in the past year, I'm pretty confident in saying. And it turned out that um, he had paid about $915,000 in back taxes. And, you know, through our source, we were able to find out he was actually Frank Ray's personal accountant. Incredible. So. You know, it'll be interesting to see what role he plays, if any, in this trial. So, uh, ladies and germs, just give us a second. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey, is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self-storage. Let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets. Price to fit your budget. Installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. And hello again, Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Heides, Mark Businich. So Mark, uh, you know, as luck would have it, the one time uh, you don't get sent to Bayonne <laughs> Board of Education, the meeting ends up ending in under 10 minutes, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, but, wow. <laughs> that would have been a pretty uh, neat assignment, though, only 10 minutes, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the <laughs> well, that's a different story for another day. So anyway, um, as far as the meeting itself goes, there was a special emergency meeting called on Monday, as you know, trustee Michael Alonzo said that he would not approve anything acting superintendent at a meeting last week. Mm. The plan was to appoint freeholder Kenny Kopas through the summer. He's the assistant superintendent of curriculum at the mm. Bayonne Public Schools. You know, with Alonzo making this claim publicly and privately, the board decided to pull that agenda item. Wow. So we had a special meeting. You know, everybody was waiting with bated breath to see what would come of it because it didn't appear that Kenny Kopas's name was going to be in the mix. And then, you know, as it should happen, 
We just see a resolution get introduced and we hear that John J. Neese, the current school chief in Keensburg, is now going to be the superintendent in Bayonne. So Mark, uh, kind of a remarkable way this unfolded. If uh, I think that's an understatement, right? No, I think, I think you're right, John. I mean, considering that they was back in April when the B Bayonne BOE announced that they were going to conduct a national search and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, from that time, there was, I didn't see any reports or at least didn't have didn't think that they would choose somebody uh you know maybe within new jersey if they're doing a national national search i was a little bit surprised when they announced that this gentleman from keensburg will be taking over bay bay on boe to make sure that there's a superintendent on site when the new school year starts in september well listen every time there's a national search in hudson county uh that search never seems to go very far but that's uh again another story for another day but uh, what this means is that uh, Dr. Michael Wanko, his term is up on June 30th. Obviously, we're just a couple weeks out from that. So we're going to see, I mean, my understanding is that the State Department of Education needs 60-day notice before a new superintendent comes into any school district. Mm -hmm. So I would think that would mean they need an acting superintendent for roughly 45 days. So it'll be interesting to see who they pull from their current staff or, you know, maybe other, mm -hmm. others apply. But it'll be interesting to see who fills that void between when Dr. Wanko leaves and what Mr. Neese comes in. And there's also a unique uh, uh, wrinkle in this in this whole selection process too, right, John? Because like, isn't four out of the nine Board of, e, Board of Education trustees have a conflict of interest at this point because they know somebody who, or is a family member or a family member who works within the BOE? Right, yeah, and, uh, that's an important clerical po uh, point, Mark, so thanks for bringing that up. So there's nine members on the governing body, as you know, and I'm sure most people watching know as well, but there's nine members and four of them, yeah, they have conflicts of interest due to family members working at the board. So this was actually a uh, 503 vote with uh, three people abstaining and uh, five voting in the affirmative. Again, you know, those conflicts le let it down to the doctrine of necessity. Uh, in the event that if there was another member absent, they would have had to use the doctrine of necessity. But, you know, it didn't come to that. Everyone eventually let cooler heads prevail, oddly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have our new superintendent, so we'll see what the future holds here. But, um, you know, obviously Bayona, that big school funding crisis last year, now they had to find the new superintendent. So I think it's safe to say they've had a trying 12 months, right, Mark? Indeed they have, John, for sure. And uh, just anything else about this process that struck you? Well, again, I mean, the, the fact that they voted without any uh, explanation for their vote, and I guess that, ex that explains why the meeting was only 10, and it, and it, and it was a special <laughs> meeting of all meetings, so, but yet that special meeting was only 10 minutes, so what was so special about it? <laughs> That, that's, that's certainly one perspective, yes. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to see what happens there. Uh, you know, Bayonne is all, you know, it's under the radar, but actually in November, they have a uh, special council race to fill uh, the seat that's currently occupied by Neil Carroll. That's uh, up in the first ward, so we'll see. I mean, we've obviously heard some names like Neil Reynolds, a retired police officer. We've heard about uh, Peter Franco, who has been called anything uh, between an annoyance and an activist and anything in between. Sure. Probably a couple other words that start with A2, but, you know, that's... Uh, Any possibility of former mayor candidate who challenged Jimmy Davis last year? Has his name come up? I, I haven't heard him, uh, Mark. I, I don't think that's in his uh, purview right now. But look, it's only June, and unless you're Hoboken, you don't really start uh, November races in June. So we'll see what the future brings. We're going to jump again real quick. Hang with us. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The MyJCMC app, we belong to you. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Heides and Mark Businich in your home, on your desktop, on your iPad, and your cell phone. So, 
we also wanted to talk a little bit about Jersey City and uh, Mark, those council caucus meetings can be quite brutal as you know firsthand. And uh, but this one seemed like it was worth your while. This discussion about Airbnb got pretty uh, got pretty interesting if I say so myself. Oh indeed it did John. In fact when I uh, got to City Hall on Monday evening was, there was supposed to be a rally called by the uh, Airbnb host. Those are people who have like who rent out their homes and, and who have purchased additional properties so that they can make them available for short-term rentals for uh, Airbnb guests. And, uh, but the rally was scheduled for 5 o'clock uh, to coincide with uh, the start of the, um, the caucus meeting to discuss this particular matter. But because the agenda item at the caucus meeting to discuss Airbnb was put off later in the evening, they decided not to hold the rally, and so they wanted to make sure that they were upstairs in the caucus room, the Airbnb host, that is, f to hear what the caucus, uh, the council persons on the caucus would say. And so uh, from 5 o'clock and, and around, so finally at around 10 p.m., the caucus started to discuss the um, um, the issue related to Airbnb short rentals, and it was James uh, Ward E. Councilman James Solomon who led off the discussion. He was one of uh, four other council members who were part of an ad hoc committee to see what kind of solutions, new provisions that they can come up with to uh, amend the ordinance. Remember, it was back in 2015, John, when Jersey City allowed for the uh, prolifer expansion, proliferation of Airbnb uh, short term sure. rentals, and yet. Um, and yet the Airbnb host had been saying that, well, you gave us this right to do this in 2015. Now, why are you trying to rein us in? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely is something that warrants a very long discussion. But before we continue, let's take a look at the clip. Let's let people see what you were able to see oh, on Monday. Interesting. I'm 61 years old. I'm an actor right now. So you could do well this month and starve next month. I needed this to pay the taxes. And I was really fearful of losing my home after... My family's been in that house over 110 years. And to lose it because City Hall gave me a $28,000 tax bill just had me enraged. Now, again, they're not giving any tax bill to the hotels and their unions who don't even live here. Well, I live here and I vote, and these people live here and they vote. And I hope that council understands that. The abated properties aren't subject to the reval. So they're still paying a, a pilot based on a value of 10 or 15 years ago. That's a double kick in the you-know-what. And boy, it just gets me furious, furious that this city would do this to us. Liz, your immediate reaction to the council discussing in their caucus meeting the um, outlook for short-term rentals. Yeah, so we're, first of all, so pleased and we really appreciate Councilman Young really recognize, hearing the voices of our host and wanting to ensure that those who, as he said himself, have invested money here and are really lifting up the Jersey City economy are able to continue doing so. Um, but, you know, we have serious concerns regarding the fact that the council, other council members don't seem to want to push forward uh, a regulatory package that would provide for a fair and clear path forward for home sharing in Jersey City, one that, as you saw tonight, so many residents rely on in order to make ends meet. And you're saying that's your statement that it would end home sharing. Is that related to the fact that uh, hosts who say even who have invested in second properties wouldn't be able to make those available to tenants? There's a number of different restrictions. Honestly, it's a, I think it's the sum of the parts really that prescribe an end of home sharing altogether. Um, that you know, if you look at the entire ordinance, it really would just entirely limit home sharing of any type in the city. Um, again, you know, we think it's really important to uh, grandfather an existing host, as Councilman Young has had so adequately, uh, so uh, eloquently argued for. Um, but again, we really would support a total regulatory package that again includes registration among other measures and that's something that our hosts support as well. And just to follow up, what, what stipulation or feature of the new ordinance that makes you believe that it would lead to an end of home sharing? Again, there's so many different pieces of it. You know, again, Can you name one. So, for example, the uh, 60 night a year restriction um, that did increase from the previous ordinance, which uh, restricted um, sharing in owner occupied units when the owner is not present to 28 nights a year. But even 60 nights a year, you know, we know that our host community they really invest in their properties. They want to make sure that they're providing the very best to the guests who are coming to Jersey City, and only being able to rent 60 nights a year would be incredibly restrictive 
negative and would mean that it would be very difficult for them to uh, make any sort of extra money by home sharing. And again, that's just one of many examples. There's limits on the types of buildings where you can share your home. Uh, there's limits on tenants being able to share the, share their home. Um, and you know, the again, when you look at the sum of all the parts, it you know, I think this ordinance really means that very very few Jersey City residents would be able to tap into what is proven to be a clear economic tool, and that's deeply concerning. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hiya, Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Highness, Mark Businich. And Mark, I know that we could talk about Airbnb for a long time, but you know, we're running a little short, so give us the uh, you know, the hurry up offense here. Sure, so I'll condense a five hour discussion, John, until like twenty seconds. If uh, you could. The, the main the main uh, the main takeaway, John, is that Michael Yoon, Councilman Michael Yoon, wants to make sure is looking out for those Airbnb hosts who purchase say multiple properties, maybe some of them spent up to like one million dollars, two million dollars, so that they can make them available to Airbnb uh, uh, guests, he's asking that there could be further discussion ab about that to give those owners some time to be able to maybe sell those properties. So that discussion will continue. Yes, I hear there will be hearings apparently on this ordinance. So I think if we're still a ways off between this before this new one gets passed, uh, if it gets passed, before it even sees a vote. Mm. So um, something else on another topic, heading back up north, not really in the political arena, but a, a fairly uh, good story in my opinion. Mm. We had a we had a captain promoted, that's Cynthia Montero of the North Bergen Police Department, and she's actually the first Latina, not just in the North Bergen PD's history, but in the whole county. Wow. So um, this was a ceremony where 15 people were promoted. There was a new deputy chief, two inspectors, captains, and uh, lieutenants and sergeants as well, but the most notable was uh, Montero. So let's take you, wow. let's look at that clip. Sure. 15 promotions, that's, that's just amazing, that's incredible. I don't know if that actually happens in the state of New Jersey. Chief. Never. Uh, I thought a couple years ago when we decided to have a ceremony at the recreation center, that was, uh, that was amazing. It was big. Nothing compared to this promotion. So, uh, with that, I'm very proud to be up here and being part of this, this ceremony. Well, I left it back in 1985. At that time, there were about 88 police officers. The, um, in its entirety, there were only two operating police officers. And that could be found on TV because I was interviewed back then. I was a commissioner, but I was willing to be interviewed. And they did it, uh, they looked at the uh, North Urban, and then they mentioned that the policemen going to the details of riding public buses. And that's where the town was. And at that time, if you look at the charge that uh, Ethan Silas and Bob had worked on, at that time in history, our crime rate was higher than the state average than the county average. It just reflected exactly what was going on. It took a lot of time and a lot of work. The first thing we did was buy cars. Second, begin to build up the ranks. But it was hard to do because the town was also bankrupt at the time. In 2014, when Sergeant Montana was promoted, she became the first Latina supervisor in the history of the North Urban Police Department. In 2016, when promoted to lieutenant, she became the highest ranking female in the department. Today, Captain Cynthia Montero will become the first female in the history of the North Urban Police Department to rise to the rank of captain, and she will also become the first Latina in the history of Hudson County to hold All right, folks, thanks for joining us again on Hudson County View Live and Uncut. I'm John R. Heinis, Mark Businich, thanks for joining us. Thanks a again, pleasure John. and a privilege as always. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. That's why you need me and I need you. We'll catch you next week. See you guys next week.